What up dude bros, I'm Frank. This is a speculation video on a few upcoming blasters for 2018. I do not have these blasters in my possession. I've only been provided a small amount of information by my rep at Hasbro and I have one image for each blaster. I intentionally avoid viewing any other speculation threads or any information on the internet other than what's provided by Hasbro. And that's so other people's opinions and terrible deductions don't get into my head and manipulate my reviews. I haven't done one of these Nerf news videos in a while, but a ton of comments have been coming in specifically about the Prometheus saying, hey Coop, what do you think about this, this, and this? Have you heard about it? When are you going to review it? And tons and tons of comments. Wasn't going to, but now I will make a little speculation video. I'll be covering four blasters in this video, the Nerf Elite Infinist, the Strike Mega Thunderhawk, the rival Prometheus, and the rival Hades. I've been provided a little bit of information by Hasbro, so I'll have like a by Hasbro indicator somewhere on screen to separate those facts that were provided to me from my deductions and my opinion and speculation. Hopefully I'll get a touch and fire these blasters at the Toy Fair next month, but until then, here's some speculation. First blaster, the Nerf Instrike Elite Infinis. Stated retail price is $69.99 or about 70 US dollars, and this will be released in fall 2018. They say it features a motorized quick load technology. As you feed darts into the blaster, the darts are automatically loaded into the 30 round removable drum. Hold down the acceleration button to power up the blaster, then pull the trigger to fire. The blaster includes 30 elite darts and requires 4 D batteries. That's it for the Hasbro information, now to my opinion. I'm really interested to know what the quick load technology is because this is retailing for 70 US dollars in the Rapid Strike, which seems really similar to this on like core concepts, was like 35, maybe 40 US dollars. So it sounds like somehow you put the, the darts into the blaster and then it's automatically fed into the magazine. So it automatically loads the mag for you. I'm really interested to see this technology because it will have to be very well refined mechanically speaking and very easy to use to be actually faster and more practical than to just hold a magazine and manually load in darts. Without some type of fun link system so you can just grab your darts and drop them in like a hopper system, I don't see how this would be a huge advantage over just manually loading, especially given that retail cost of $70. That's expensive for what seems to be a pretty simple blaster. I can't speculate on that loading system too much because I haven't been provided pictures or seen any video of that loading system in particular, but I'm very interested to see that. I assume the blaster's fully automatic. It wouldn't make much sense to build something like that to make it semi, and it'd be kind of a waste to have that type of loading system on a semi-auto blaster. Hopefully it's a faster way to load and fire elite darts, maybe spurred on by the love of the hopper system provided by the Nemesis, because I've talked about just being able to dump balls and then fire. Loading up your magazines is no fun. Is this a solution to that? I don't know. It might be. And the little symbol on the blaster uh, pops out to me. I haven't seen that symbol before. So maybe that indicates, hey, this blaster has the quick load technology, and that's like the quick load symbol. I don't know. The drum magazine looks similar enough to a standard in-strike magazine, so hopefully it's all cross-compatible. If the loading mechanism is way faster than manually loading, I could see myself buying one of these just to be like a magazine loading system. So even if I don't like using the blaster, I'll just hold it over in the staging area, run over, and just dump ammo into it to have my magazines loaded. <laughs> like a caddy to just sit over there and load for me, if it works. I don't want to speculate too far on that because it, it's going to have to be really mechanically refined and because of how squishy darts are and they're not like balls like in the rival line, so they're they're difficult to funnel. Plenty of people have tried to try to design funnels to automatically load because loading is, is terrible. <laughs> Overall shape and ergonomics of the blaster look, you know, cool. This weird front handhold is just wicked big and it doesn't look cosmetically appealing to me. Going with a fixed stock sort of surprises me, so I'm kind of led to believe some type of mechanism is in there, like underneath the Elite logo. That would like block them from being able to have one of the standard in-strike stock attachment points. But the Rapid Strike and the Hyperfire did not have attachable stock points either, so maybe that's just the, the theme of the fully automatic type of blaster or that like class or whatever. Two tactical cool rails up on the top for your double optics. Nice, nice, but no side rails. They bummer. I guess the Modulus, was the, was that the first one to do it? And the Modulus series might be more guided towards the tactical attachments. Um, although, I like to see rails on everything. There's plenty of side space over on the sides of this blaster for the rails. I need more tactics, bro. That's my speculation on the Infinis. Oh man, I just noticed that the, that little symbol kind of looks like the Infinity logo. If that's supposed to be obvious, I feel like an idiot for not seeing that. <laughs> it even overlaps. Yeah, that cannot be an accident. <laughs> Bro, bro, Illuminati confirmed. <laughs> So, very excited to see the loading system. I'm very skeptical of that $70 retail cost for something that looks very similar to a Rapid Strike. But that is it for the Infinis. Now to the AccuStrike Mega Thunderhawk. Announcer voice activated when I introduce a new blaster name. Retail price of $49.99, also available in fall of 2018. Introducing first ever Mega AccuStrike Blaster. The barrel extension slides back and forth on top of the blaster for custom performance. <laughs> custom for... <laughs> allowing for distant targeting or more compact blaster. 
Yeah, because that longer barrel helps with accuracy. Featuring a flip-down bipod for steady shots with mega performance and AccuStrike accuracy. Features a 10-dart side-loading indexing clip. Includes 10 Nerf Mega AccuStrike darts and also compatible with Nerf Mega darts. That is it for the Hasbro stuff, now to speculation. And I think it's a really cool concept. Like, the Centurion was awesome, but in my review I mentioned when you, when you lock on the front barrel, you can't remove it. And not even for, like, use, but for storage. That Centurion is wicked big. It doesn't fit into any of my bins. And for regular people that don't have an entire bedroom that's dedicated just to storing Nerf gear like me, it's a burden. So I think it's really awesome that the Thunderhawk has an adjustable barrel so you don't have to like keep them detached or anything. It's built into the blaster, but then it's collapsible. I think it's hilarious that they're claiming customizable like performance. Obviously, it's not going to aid with accuracy, but it'll give you the style points for sure. I'm really excited to see the Mega AccuStrike darts. Mega darts are fun, but they're not terribly accurate. So seeing those in the AccuStrike version to be able to hit stuff with all that stopping power. If you're knocking over cups, like when I target shoot, it is fun to have that larger mass compared to the Elite darts, so you can just Mega Smash stuff. It's like shooting out a falcon punch. This loading mechanism reminds me of the Battle Scout clip, kind of how it shoots through the blaster, and it's a genuine clip, it's not a magazine. At least the Battle Scout loading system, I'm not sure. It looks like the same way, but I haven't seen all angles of this blaster, so I, I don't know. In the image here, you can see the tip of the dart, so it looks very similar to that, so I assume it's the same system. But that's a really interesting choice, in my opinion, for a sniper rifle, or the sniper rifle class, because a 10 round mega clip is gonna be like that wide, sticking out of the side of your blaster, I feel like sniper rifles have to be thinner and sleeker. I mean, they're stupid long and really big, but they're, they're not wide blasters. So that'll look a little weird. The built-in bipod is an interesting choice because it kind of consumes where your left hand would go or your off hand. So you have one hand on the grip and then you put your other hand. If the bipod's not like flipped down to be stable, where are you gonna put your hand? Seems like it might be a little cramped. And this blaster looks super top heavy. And I don't have the image of the blaster extended, but I'm curious if the, the orange part where it says Thunderhawk is going to also stick out with the barrel. If so, that rail is gonna extend away as well. So your scope, since you obviously have to have a scope in your super lead sniper rifle, is gonna be like much further down the, the blaster. So that'll be weird. This is a super quirky blaster just to begin with. I mean, you can look at it and say that's not traditional. So I'm really curious to get my hands on it to see how it feels and how it mechanically feeds. But like a lot of the other mega blasters, they aren't going to be for traditional nerfers. It's going to be for the, the weirdos, but those are the super fun dudes at the Nerf Wars. <laughs> Being normal is completely overrated. Compared to the other blasters in the speculation, this is probably my uh, least like anticipated. I'm not really a mega guy, and the other three blasters are super cool and like interesting, so I'm going to stop wasting time on this one. That is the Mega Thunderhawk. Next, the rival Prometheus. Retail price of just under 200 US dollars and also available in fall of 2018. This blaster features the all-new advanced acceleration system which allows it to fire at a rate of eight rounds per second. It can hold a whopping 200 high impact rounds in its easy load hopper. I love the language in this description. The Prometheus is a fully motorized blaster with a rechargeable nickel metal hydrate battery for endless fun. Endless fun. Package includes blaster, 200 high impact rounds, rechargeable nickel metal hydrate battery, charger, two flags, shoulder strap, and instructions. <laughs> I should be a radio announcer, man. That would be awesome. <laughs> Nobody would listen, but it would be really fun. <laughs> that is it for what was provided to me. So my speculation on this blaster. I thought the Nemesis was overpowered. I thought the Nemesis was a normal Nerf blaster on steroids. This is some next-gen steroids, bro. <laughs> 200 round capacity is so big. Like the Nemesis Hopper, my, my biggest issue with that is having to, to supply yourself with enough ammo to get through an entire day of nerf. If you double the capacity and you increase the rate of fire, you're just going to be spewing foam. Most of your... Which, which is going to be fun until you have to supply your ammo. I've read a couple of comments whining about the price. Now, $200 is expensive, and I'm not going to dispute that at all, but it's interesting that they're including the rechargeable battery. If that's the same or a similar battery to, like, the, the Nemesis and the other Rival Blasters, that retails for $30 US dollars. So that plus 200 high-impact rounds, which is about $40 or $50, just those accessories alone are, like, $80 of value or retail value on top of the blaster itself. So it makes sense that it'll be more expensive than the Nemesis, although it is still very expensive. I'm really interested to know what the advanced acceleration system is because the nemesis uses a conveyor belt a conveyor belt as opposed to like an injection system like the rapid striker most flywheel blasters is is more scalable in the sense that the injection arm when this starts going too fast it can jam up and stuff a conveyor belt can kind of go almost as fast as you can pump it as long as the flywheels have enough torque to continue and not get bogged down a conveyor belt is a much smoother system to scale up and rate of fire so assuming this only has one set of flywheels and it's not shooting out of two different barrels you can only go so fast so i'm curious if this is genuinely a new technology 
technology, or they just pushed more current into the, the feeding mechanism so it boosts the rate of fire. I don't know. I don't know the rate of fire of the Nemesis offhand, but they're advertising this as much faster than that. I'm not sure. But I'd like to see how it works, because the conveyor belt in the Nemesis, people have run lipos on those and boosted up the rate of fire. Because that system is so efficient, all you have to do is give it an upgrade to boost up the rate of fire. I'm curious if they really did have to invent a new technology for this, or if it's just a different battery. Perhaps that means there's a new rechargeable battery, and that would be kind of a bummer, because it's going to lose compatibility with the other blasters, and that existing rechargeable pack, because I like being able to use just those, I have two or three of those rechargeable packs that I switch into all my different rival blasters. But if you want a performance upgrade, you need more voltage, so it would make sense if they, they released a new one with this one. I'm not sure. Whether or not it's a new one, it's nice that they're going rechargeable. Designing something of this size and with this performance boost, it would have to run on at least 6D alkaline batteries, which is a lot of weight. So it's cool to see them go the other angle with rechargeable. You can lower the mass of the whole unit, and if everybody's buying the rechargeables for the Nemesis anyways, you might as well include it and kind of lower the weight. 200 round hopper is awesome. Um, if you wanted that with the rival Nemesis, you could always just kind of expand on it and modify it upward. Um, so it's not like unheard of or impossible, but super cool. But the ergonomics of the, the Prometheus seem really weird. It's so untraditional that it, it's almost setting itself to be a, a specialty blaster right out of the gate. You can pick up a Nemesis and use it as your primary, and it's pretty traditional. This Prometheus is something that you hold by, like it looks like a flamethrower, like you kind of walk around with it like that. And you are just pre-setting yourself to waste a ton of ammo, because it's harder to aim when you're firing from the hip, as Call of Duty has taught us all. But the joystick style handle does look pretty comfortable and cool. And I really like the little sled feet. I think those are funny like to, to rest it on stuff. It's interesting that they so set it up to be walking around with it instead of some type of like tripod unit or bipod unit and then some type of system like the Rhino Fire where you could fire it as a sentry. That would be such a perfect blaster to leave posted up somewhere. Because of the angle of the trigger grip, like if, if you wanted to post it up somewhere, it would be really weird to set it up on something and shoot from behind barrier. Oh, how epic would it be if that pivoted down? That would fix the problem entirely. Like because it's angled, if you could pull it up at like a right angle, like um, the Prometheus gets, a, gets an erection, then you could totally post up somewhere and, and use it like a uh, security turret in the corner. Oh, that would be epic. That's not speculation, that's just hopes and dreams, which are going to be crushed. Other than that, it's, it's probably going to be awesome if it's anything like the Nemesis, but um, still very specialty. Like, the Nemesis is still out of the reach of a lot of nerfers. It's very expensive, not only for the blaster, but for the ammo. To, to play an actual nerf war with a Nemesis is expensive because you need a few hundred rounds. It's so easy to blow through. This, your increasing rate of fire and capacity, you're going to go through at least twice as much ammo if you fire with about the same like play style. So very interested to see how many people buy that, but the people that do are going to stomp on everybody else on the field. That concludes my speculation for the Prometheus. Last blaster to cover is the rival Hades, provided by Hasbro. Retail price of $69.99 or about $70 US dollars and also available in the fall of 2018. Load 60 high impact rounds into the Easy Load Integrated Magazine. Package includes blaster, 60 high impact rounds, two flags, and instructions. That's it from Hasbro, my speculation now. Too long didn't read, it's a big old Artemis man. It looks so similar to the Artemis. The Artemis was great. If you don't like the magazine system and you don't want to have stuff on your body, the Artemis at 30 rounds is a decent capacity, very battle effective package. This looks like somebody just got the Artemis and was like, boom, let's sell it. <laughs> and that's not even a complaint because it looks like an upgraded Artemis and a high capacity one that's more primary worthy. The Artemis was kind of weird because it didn't have a stock attachment point and it didn't have a built-in stock, so it wasn't as like traditional as something with a stock. This makes beautiful use of, instead of like attaching a stock to an Artemis, this isn't just a stock, it's a stock that like doubles your ammo. It states factually that it's spring powered, but I assume like the Artemis it'll have slam fire so you can pump away. Um, this, I'm very excited for the Hades. I haven't really used the Artemis as much as I would like to because that 30 round capacity is, you know, awesome, but when you compare it to just carrying a few extra 12 round magazines, it's, it's hard to use that under my play style and how I like to nerf. But 60 rounds, when you can have it loaded up, ready to go, and if I'm in, in like my house or an area where I'm not like outside where I can lose stuff, you can just shoot off your 60 rounds, drop it, and pick up a different blaster and continue nerfing, and that would be such a battle effective thing to do with 60 rounds. Of course, compared to the Nemesis and now the Prometheus, um, 60 rounds is lower capacity, but if you ignore the Prometheus and the Nemesis and you say spring, pump action, very traditional ergonomics and overall shape, and usability with 60 round capacity. That's pretty awesome. The $70 retail cost surprises me. That's very expensive, but it might just be me, but it seems like all these Nerf Blasters are getting way more expensive uh, than they just were a few years ago. Ergonomic notes, I typically don't like thumbhole stocks, but it appears that the grip is long enough so it won't be bunching up into your, your wrist or anything. So that's a positive. I appreciate the rear sling mount. Thanks, Hasbro. And this little notch up in the front of the blaster, um, it doesn't make sense from this view, but I'm wondering if it's like a rail that goes around so it could be like a front sling mount. I don't know. But pretty traditional ergonomics. Um, I do notice the full ambi uh, safety switch. 
so that's awesome. When you see the selector switch on this side of the blaster, that it's full ambi, bro. Full ambi, need more tactics, bro. <laughs> but very excited for the Hades. Because it's so similar to the Artemis, I, I don't know how much speculation I really need to give. I was happy with the Artemis and the performance, and, and if they maintain that level of, you know, like mechanical refinement, and they just r truly did extend it out to increase the capacity, it'll be a very battle-effective blaster. So I'll just leave it at that. That concludes my speculation on the Hades. So that's the four blasters that I have news on for this video. I am going to Toy Fair 2018 next month, so hopefully I'll get my hands on some of these blasters. I don't know for sure that all of these will be there, but I'll get my hands on anything they show me. And more importantly, I'll try to get as much video as I can for you guys, so if you have any particular questions that I can answer with video footage at Toy Fair, leave a comment in the section below. This Photos app built into Windows is the program in the world. What I already know I want to get footage on because I'm personally curious and I assume some of you have the same curiosities. The loading mechanism in the Infinis to see if that actually works, so I want to get as much video as I can to see how that really functions and how it's compressing the darts into the drum. The barrel extension thing on the Thunderhawk is also a point of interest and the clip loading um, as well as just overall use. And I really want to hold that one to see if it's, if it's ergonomically even like wieldable overall feel and weight of the Hades blaster. And the Prometheus, pretty much everything is a point of interest on this blaster. The grip, is it comfortable? Is it, Can it like get an erection so it can go up into sentry mode? I highly doubt it and I think it would have been advertised if it has the ability to transform but it would be cool if it did. It's loading mechanism to see if this acceleration technology is truly new or they just ramped up the current. The little skeleton feet are cute and I want to get some video of that just to see how, how those are designed. As well as all the firing footage that I can and um, close-up macro shots hopefully of the Thunderhawk um, AccuStrike darts themselves. That's what I'm interested in. If you want to see anything else in particular about these blasters, I'll leave a comment in the section below. I'm bringing my camera and I want to try to get as much time up close to the blasters as possible. The Toy Fair is next month and of course I'll be reviewing these blasters when I receive samples of them. This video is just a speculation video based on an image and one paragraph pretty much. The Toy Fair videos are also more or less speculation videos. They're not proper reviews until I can get my hands on production models of them and run them through their paces. Then I'll review them later whenever I get my hands on them. All of them have fall 2018 release dates, but historically speaking, we've been able to get them like earlier than that. Maybe in the late summer. I don't know. I'll get them as quickly as I can and get reviews up when I can. So that's it for 2018 speculation nerf video. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed um, the objective information, especially it being separated from my deductions. I don't want to confuse anybody or misinform anybody like with the boner thing with the Prometheus. I don't want you to get excited for that. <laughs> Poor choice of words get excited for the boner feature. That's why I'm trying to be super clear with what was provided to me and what's like a fact and then what's my opinion and hopes and dreams which Hasbro will surely crush. <laughs> Soul crusher. Uh, that's it for this speculation video. Thanks so much for watching bros and as always, stay tactical.